everybody it's kelsey brianna j and today i'm doing a video using the big zendo palette from natasha denona which just launched on her website as well as on sephora's website which i will have links to both down below in the comment section i was super excited to see this palette because i wasn't expecting it this palette came out of nowhere. I thought Natasha Denona was going to give us cheeks or lips for the spring, but she surprised us and gave us the Zendo palette, which is the larger variation of the mini Zendo palette, which launched first. This palette is a midi sized Natasha Denona large eyeshadow palette. If you all are familiar with her eyeshadow types, then she has the super large palettes. She's only come out with those once, the ones with the 24 pans. Then she has the 15 pan eyeshadow palettes. Those are typically $129 and they still have 2.5 brands of eyeshadow in each pan but then we have the midi size which gives you less products per pan but it costs less because these cost $65 as opposed to the others that have a little bit of that higher price point so the description of this eyeshadow palette says that it is a warm toned palette inspired by the mini Zendo featuring 15 new iconic Natasha Denona pressed pigment eyeshadows it includes hues of pink brown coral and peach with pops of turquoise a combination of shades that conceptualizes a mix of elements and ambiance where wood meets metal and nature meets modern so i'm excited to go ahead and jump into this eyeshadow palette i'm not sure if it's limited edition or not i will notate that if i find it out down in the description box but normally when natasha denona comes out with her eyeshadow palettes even if they are limited edition, you do have time to get it because it's not like a limited edition launch that sells out super fast and you can't get your hands on it. So that's the good part about it. You do typically have a little bit of time to think about if you want something from Natasha, even if it's limited. So hopefully this video helps you make up your mind. I'm going to do three different eye looks. This one is going to be the third and last one. So let's go ahead and do it. I hope that you all enjoy and let me know if you plan on picking up this palette down in the comment section. Okay, Kel Bell, so here's the first look that we're going to be doing using the Zendo palette. So I'm first going to take balance. Let's get that on a fluffy brush and take that directly in the crease. This is a very pigmented color. It goes on a little bit darker than it looks in the pan. So I'm just going to take that right in my crease and blend it back and forth. Next, I'm going to zip into Zeal and bring it on down and deepen up. Woo! That is so dark. I wasn't ready. Okay, wait a minute. That is really intense. So I'm just going to take that right on the outer corner like so. And then gradually diffuse it over. I'm not going to take it too far up because I don't want to cover up the other stuff. So I'm just going to keep it pretty concentrated right there. Let's dip into Mantra. Let's pack that on the outer corner bringing it up towards the crease i'm taking this right on the lid on the outer corner and i'm just tap 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 tapping that okay with the flat shader i'm going to pick up equilibrium and i'm going to pat that oh my gosh this is smooth and pigmented and i'm going to pack this on the middle of the lid and then blend it over next i'm going to dip into flow pop that a little bit further on the inner corner i'm actually going to overlap it a little bit with equilibrium on the inner portion i'm gonna take breath y'all i hate the word breath breath <laughs> anyways i'm gonna pop that on the inner corner and then blend it over breath i actually want to go back with a little bit of zeal let's intensify this once more right on that outer portion of the crease okay bring it on in now I'm going to go back with breath and I'm going to take that on the inner corner on the lower portion of the lid. Then let's pop into flow. So I'm just going to pack this on. And then mantra all the way the rest of the way. Get a little bit of this fallout out. Gonna do some eyeliner on the inner portion. This is Marc Jacobs Whirlpool. Maybe do a little swipe of eyeliner at the top. And a lash. I'm gonna take my friends, the Plastic Boys. Look at this. Look at this. They're called Snatched. They're full and wispy. And voila, the first look is done. So here's the second look that we're doing using the Zendo palette. 
warm little throwback reddish moment look to let's start off with relief let's dust this above our crease as our transition shade next i'm gonna take bigger a little bit down from the transition shade so back and forth next i'm gonna take a flat shader in the shade yama pop that on the inner corner and blend it over Next, let's dip into Luster. Ooh, that's gold, in it? <laughs> I'm going to take that right on the lid and then blend it over. I'm not going to pack it on too much because I don't want it to be just like a prominent gold. I want it to be a wash of gold. So I put on a little bit and then I'm just going to swipe it to diffuse it. Next, I'm going to go into Aura and take that right on the outer corner. And then blend that over. I'm going to do red eyeliner. I'm going to do Cherry Punk by Fenty Beauty. Okay, lashes applied. Now let's finish off the look. I'm going to dip back into Yama and put that on the inner corner on the bottom. Let's hit Aura again. Pop that on the middle. And then let's go back into Vigor. And take that. And wrap it around. And there you have it, folks. It's a look. Look two. Done. Look number three. I'm going to come in with Calm and a blending brush. And I'm going to take that in my crease and blend it up. Okay. It's kind of light. So this is going to be my transition shade. I'm going to go over it a few times just to get little bit more pigmentation and intensity I'm gonna go into balance take that dang I forgot again that this was so pigmented <laughs> all right I'm just gonna take that in the crease now I'm gonna take a smaller blending brush and dip into mindful I'm gonna take that right on the outer corner on the lid and blend it up and around okay now I'm going to take the Refer number 28 brush, like one of my favorite brushes of all time, and I'm going to dip into the shade Scents. Let's pop that on the lid. Mm, that is a pretty rosy bronze color. Pretty. And move on over and grab Tranquil. I'm going to pop that on the inner corner and then blend that over. So I'm going to take some eyeliner. This is Charlotte Tilbury, a walk of no shame. I'm going to go back into Tranquil. Pop that again on the inner corner, re-intensify on the top, and also bring it around on the bottom. And then I'm going to go into Aura, it's like that on the middle. And then I'm going to go back into Mindful. And finish this off by connecting that to the top, like this. So here's the third and final look using the Zenzo palette. Let's go ahead and get into my final thoughts about this palette. So I hope that you all enjoyed the tutorial portion of me creating three different eye looks using the Zendo palette. I felt like I was able to do three completely different looks and I used all of the eyeshadows in the entire palette. And I feel like each one gave me a little bit of something different. So if I wanted to do a little bit more of an intense eye look, I could. If I wanted to scale it back, I could. I do feel like the essential elements are there to make this palette a successful palette. I have plenty to choose from for lid shades. I have plenty to choose from for crease shades. I preferred the matte eyeshadows in here over the shimmer cell. I definitely feel like Natasha showed out with the mattes. They are so smooth, so creamy. They took little to no effort to blend out. The shimmers are good too, but to me, they aren't as popping as some of her other shimmers are in other palettes. I feel like the shimmers in comparison to even the Biba palette or the bronze palette are a little calm. They don't have that popping element to them that give them that multi-dimensional shine. I feel like they are just normal, regular, shimmery eyeshadows. I had to build up a few of them a lot, and I'm not really used to that with Natasha Denona's eyeshadow formula. I'm used to her shimmery eyeshadows 
being out of this world popping and I feel like they are pretty mute. I don't think they're bad. They're just not as intense as her other shimmery eyeshadows are. And I have the bronze palette here and I will show you a comparison. I mean the colors in and of themselves don't pop out as much in the pan. You can kind of see the bronze palette has those shimmers coming at you right off the bat without touching it and these don't have that they're a little bit more demure so i'm gonna take silk from the bronze palette right like you can kind of see it on my finger okay so here's silk from the bronze palette boom pigmentation super super shiny compared to yama from this palette like you can't see it really it doesn't have that shine element there it's just kind of chill and then even if I took, you know, the super gold one, Luster, which I can take here, it's still just super calm in comparison to Alloy from the Bronze Palette. It just doesn't have that same star peel. It doesn't have that same pigmentation and intensity. So I'm not really impressed with the shimmery eyeshadows in this palette. I do feel like if you like these type eyeshadows that are a little bit less pigmented, then you would like them because it's not bad quality. It's just not Natasha Denona's signature quality either. I still like the color story. I feel like it's fun. It's something that you can incorporate a little bit of color into. You can do an everyday look and then add that pop there. But I do feel like the inclusion of a few shades in this palette somewhat aged the palette and made it a little bit more retro looking and not in a retro way that's cool because it's been a long time and we're bringing it back. But retro as in mm, you're not really, really keeping up with the color schemes of what's in right now. And you're still adding in these reddish tones, these warm tones that really, really aren't on trend right now to me. The shade Vigor, I mean, it's a good shade. It's a reddish warm tone, but it's like, that is so 2016. I really wanted something a little bit more modern as well as the shade Luster. I mean, it's a gold eyeshadow, but she's given us gold so many times that to include it in this palette, it needed to have been done in a more interesting way. And I don't feel like that was what was given. I feel like we were off to a strong start with this entire side of the palette. So this row, this row, and this row. But then I feel like when we got to this row and this row they fell into the trap of let's give them something that's familiar that way we know that it's going to be a success but to me that reads as unimaginative i think that that is very boring and it could have been a little bit more daring it's like they just took bits and pieces of what was already successful and applied it here and only gave us a true difference in about two rows and I'm not mad at that. It's just when you do that, the formulation has to be A1. And I feel like this is kind of like C1. It's just not living up to my expectations of what I expect from a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. This palette automatically reminded me of the Soap Culture palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills because it has that green in there. It's a little bit of neutral in there, but then it has a little bit of the darkness. But I feel like the Soap Culture palette is cooler than the Zendo palette is. I feel like the Zendo palette could have been as cool as the Subculture palette, but it really just wasn't just because they put in those warm tones. I also feel like this palette could have benefited from putting in a true highlight color, which I don't feel like Natasha Denona does hardly ever. It doesn't seem like she's really a fan of lighter shades like these, like Rice Paper from MAC or Nylon from MAC. She never gives us those type of moments to truly get our highlight life on. So I always feel like I I want to reach outside of this palette to get that and I don't feel like she ever truly gives us a really intense dark brown and I feel like a dark brown like this one this one is coconut grove by NARS that would have elevated the palette you know this whole little group right here it's like we could have taken one of these out and given something a little bit more interesting but that's just you know my two cents on it like I said I still like the palette I still am a Natasha Denona fan it's just I want more and I feel like with these palettes that are coming out they're trying to play it safe because as with everyone we've experienced quite a loss in the past year so at this time I don't feel like we're going to be seeing the most daring makeup because these companies don't want to take too much of a risk and risk it not selling because we've already experienced a lot of economic hardship so they're gonna give us stuff that is relatable things that they know are tried and true that we like but you have to give us something different from what we already have to entice us to buy it because otherwise I know a lot of you all are just gonna feel like you already have this 
I don't feel like you have this arrangement per se, but across your collection, I'm sure you can find so many different eyeshadows to create the same color story. But I'm happy to have it. I like it. You all know I'm a Natasha Denona collector. But do I absolutely feel like you need to have this palette, especially if you have all of her other ones? Not necessarily. I don't really see the correlation between this palette and the older Zendo Mini palette. I don't feel like the color story is the same at all. I feel like we're in two different books, but that's just my opinion. So I will check you all in my very next video, which will be super, super soon. Smooch as. Bye.